And what we're going to be talking about today, it really does cover the entire coast. It doesn't matter if you're on the East Coast, West Coast, you know, Montana, Texas. Uh, you know, Neil's going to give some ideas and some comments about what he's been doing specifically where he's at. But um, it's pretty exciting what we have going on because with all the data we put together, every single person who's dealing with land, they're going to find something out about their property using using what we're use, using our platform. And then also at the top is where me and Neil will be talking about. So um, looks like we're off and running, right? We got some folks here. I see Blake somebody... Shelby just got on from Louisiana. Welcome, Blake. Awesome. Great. A lot of folks joining. Good. This is great. And you know, we, we're we mostly going to be talking about rural land, right, Neil? We're going to be talking about, I wouldn't necessarily call it vacant land because people think nothing's going on, but this is land that's probably being used for farming, ranching, recreation, something like that, right, Neil? Yeah, yeah. And I think every agent uh, throughout the country is going to have different types of land that they can deal with. And I know, uh, like I mentioned, Blake, Blake's doing a lot of solar down in Louisiana, and I've got more forested coverage, a little less solar, maybe more carbon related, even some mining up here. So definitely the software will be able to be used by all types of people from all over the country. Awesome. Awesome. Well, we'll go ahead and get into it, Neil. Uh, just quick uh, how, uh, you know, housekeeping here. Uh, if you have questions, go ahead and throw it in the Q&A. It's great. Let's go ahead and have an active chat. There should be a lot of folks on here. Um, if you have a question, Jordan's going to jump in and make sure we get that question asked. We're going to try to get through some topics here at the start. So uh, hopefully towards the end, we'll get some questions done. But um, Neil, do you want to go ahead and give a quick uh, background and summary of who you are? Sure, you bet. Um, I'm a land specialist agent. Uh, in western Wisconsin, if you look at the map, I'm kind of near Minneapolis. I'm about 35 miles east of Minneapolis. And I've been a, a, a land specialist real estate agent with uh, Whitetail Properties Real Estate out of Wisconsin here for about, I'm in my, I'm into my ninth year now. Uh, prior to that, I was a 30-year veteran of medical device sales, um, but I'm also a uh, landowner. I buy and sell properties. I flip, I buy and hold. I'm in residential and mostly recreational land at this point. And I came across the Landgate software last year at the national meeting with the Whitetail Properties guy. And, and I'm always looking for ways to maximize my own skills and just bring something a little bit different to the table for my clients. So I stand out so they don't look at me as a realtor. Um, I want to be a specialist. I want to be a land specialist. And the software is, I found to be super robust. I've started in proving or including it in my own daily business, presenting um, the data in a form of really nice look and report that I'm sure we're going to get into. And so far, the response has been pretty good. I'm, I'm pretty new at it. So I think that's why they brought me in. I'm kind of an early adopter. Well, thank you, Neil. That, that's great. That's a, it's a wonderful background. And uh I would definitely say you're an early adopter. You're you're an early mover in this, and you're taking the ball and you're running with it. So I'm happy to hear hear a little bit some of the uh, success stories and some of the learnings you've had using you know this new system. It's not really a software. We don't call ourselves software. It's basically a system for land professionals. But really quick, um, my my name is Craig Kaiser. I'm the president and co-founder of uh, of Landgate. Um, I come from a different background than Neil. I'm not from the real estate world whatsoever. I come from the energy side of the equation. I'm a geologist by background, uh, master's degree from Colorado School of Mines. So I spent the majority, the vast majority, I'm still there, of uh, my uh, my career extracting resources, trying to find sites, trying to find locations. So uh, I was on the buy side of what you guys all do. You guys all work with landowners and sellers, but we created a platform because a lot of these different resources and things um, were kind of out of the grasp of most land professionals and even the, the, the landowners because they didn't have access to the data. So the goal of Landgate was really to democratize the data, get as much information out there in front of everybody and kind of level that playing field. So, um, you know, what I'm gonna do here is real quick, you know, this is absolutely not a sales pitch for Landgate. So just, you know, want people to be very clear of that. Um, if you use the platform, great, but really this is just a conversation about the topics of, you know, things that you need to be aware of in your day-to-day -day business as being a land professional. I'm gonna give a really quick, like five, 10 minute demo here to uh, show you what Neil just talked about, some of the tools that he's using. Um, 
there's a lot of folks using LandGate. It is a tool, right? This is, I know there's a lot of different platforms out there. There's a lot of different softwares. LandGate's really an, an all-in-one type of, of solution for land professionals. So um, there's a lot of options. There's a lot of things you can do. But really quick, I think the most useful thing, and Neil, I don't want to speak for you, but I think one of the use, most useful things is that land report that we generate summarizing a piece of property that, and I, you know, that's what you've been using, correct? That's what I've been doing. So I've been, uh, when I go meet with a new client, you know, I have kind of a process that I walk through and this tool is just one of the tools that I use. I usually present two or three at a time. And then I leave this as a, as a walk away. So if I get somebody that's kind of on the fence, maybe about listing a property and they, they're really not convinced they want to sell their property, then I've kind of elevated myself because I'm bringing on some data that says, well, if you don't want to sell your property, maybe you could make some passive income this way. And, and then I show them uh, whatever the data comes up with. Perfect. Well, I'm going to do an example of that then, Neil, kind of in your backyard, Wisconsin. I can do this anywhere in the United States. Uh, but you see, it's a parcels-based mapping platform. We have an enormous amount of data from everything from carbon credits to oil and gas data to uh, infrastructure data, the cost of power going through power lines, uh, massive amounts of engineering and technical data. But uh, what I'm going to do here is just use an example. For instance, like I said, in Neil's backyard, if I was working for Neil, let's say maybe I'm a junior associate in his organization, and I'm looking to try to get listings, if I wanted to provide information to this landowner, and you can see here, uh, the same landowner owns all of these parcels. If I was to pitch them, historically, typically what I do is go and find this piece of data, put it into a PowerPoint, find this little piece of data, put it into a PowerPoint, and try to manually create as much information as I can to see the value that I'm adding for this individual. All I have to do with LandGate is basically click on the parcels. Um, I would have signed into my Power Realty account, clicked on the parcels that I want to generate a portfolio for. There's all kinds of things I can do with this portfolio. I can send it to Neil. He can look at it in his LandGate module. We can talk back and forth. It's like a CRM program. But for uh, uh, savings of time, I'm just going to show you very quickly. I can generate a very in-depth report by simply just creating a, a property here. And I would have done that by just simply clicking this button. I can write who I want to prepare it for. And this is what's really cool is I can customize this. I can upload my company logo. I can upload a biography about myself, a logo of myself. So this is my report. It's not, a, I'm not making a Landgate report. I'm making an actual Craig Tizer uh, whitetail property report. And here's an example of what that would look like. Um, this is the product that Neil and a, a significant amount of other pro, uh, land professionals have been using. Again, I uploaded my logo. There's my logo. Here's a nice picture of Neil. Neil, I hope you don't mind me stealing some of the stuff from your Whitetail website here. Uh, but that's really how quickly you can generate these, these really nice reports. I get a, you know, there's a background in Neil there. But this report, summarizes what the land values were, what the solar potential, wind, carbon, oil and gas, very, very quickly. Uh, I don't need to be an expert in any of these things, but I put it in this really nice report, um, save it as a PDF, I can email it to the client, I can print it off, I can hand it to them, um, but it's a very, very in-depth report of their property. And I think that's, you know, this is something that we've rolled out in the last 12 months. It's been very popular, it's working very well. Um, so I wanted to show you guys that, that this is something that's working very well. Um, a lot of questions we get is a lot of folks are sending mailers on a mass, mass basis. Um, you can do that same report on a mass emailing campaign. So an example of what that would look like, I went ahead and filtered whatever parcels I want to look at. These are just very good parcels for solar energy, but it could be for carbon or just for, you know, land transactions but I can select all the parcels that I want in a certain area very quickly. And then I can generate a very, very similar type of report. This is exactly what the front page of this mailer looks like. So I think I selected 2000 different parcels here. Every single landowner is gonna get a concatenated description of their property. So if this property owner owned this parcel and this one, you wouldn't be sending three reports, you'd be sending one, of a combined uh, amount of their parcels. 
But this is exactly what they see when they open their mailbox. I'm providing value to them. I'm going to give them some information. Here's a nice map of their property. I'm going to leave a nice little sticky note here that I can customize uh, when I'm making this power marketing report. Uh, I can customize all of this and make it match however I want. But I can start looking through this. Again, there's Neil's picture, background. This is Neil's report. It's not a Landgate report. But I'm going to start giving them information about their parcel. The typical success rate that we've seen, Neil, on traditional mailers, half a percent, maybe 1% callback rate. We're seeing upwards to 60, 70% callbacks on this, right? That's where people can really spend their time. It's not on the administrative stuff. It's building those networks and those relationships. So this is what that product looks like. You click a button in five minutes, you can be sending this custom mailer out to however many folks you want in a specific area. So and I think that's uh, uh, extremely powerful because um, I've been sending postcards uh, for about nine years. I, I probably personally mail every county that I uh, cover uh, at least three times a year, if not four. But in the last couple of years, I've noticed that that process has been covered, uh, copied by every major land specialist and even some of the smaller mom and pops. Um, and it, it's still the basis of my business is sending those cards. Um, and I wouldn't stop doing that, but I can tell you that I'm not getting 70% return on that. Yeah. Um, I would anticipate, though, I'm going to get a much higher return with this report only because it's fresh and it's new and nobody's seen it. And there's data on there that just people it blows people out of the way, uh, out of the water. And I think the fact that you could email that report, Craig, is going to be really powerful because if I don't know if people saw it, but I think that report said 47 pages and you're yeah. going to have to take a uh, uh, some stock out of a, a paper production company because you're going to run through reams of paper. So. That electronic transfer, I think, is going to be helpful. I think, too, though, when you finally do get it with somebody, you might, uh, an appointment with somebody, you might want to bring them a hard copy because I think a lot of the folks that are going to be receiving these reports don't do email. At least I hear that quite a bit. They're not email people, but um, they might have noticed it. They might have opened it, but I find that maybe they they just don't have the time to look through it, but they will call you, and that's your yeah. opportunity to go sit down with them. Yeah, and so and that's a great point, Neil, that that report I showed you that I generated on those 10 parcels randomly in Wisconsin, that's a really granular report. You know, I can go in there as a land professional and I can update and change those land values because we know no matter what data analytics we have, no matter what algorithm, nobody's going to beat your knowledge, Neil, of what the land is worth, what it's transacting at, what the forest land, deciduous forest is worth, what the you know, what the alfalfa is worth, what it, wherever you're at, your boots on the ground, the folks in this call, in this webinar, you know that better than everybody. So we give the ability to go ahead and update those numbers. And that customized report, you know, yeah, it's, it can be, it's very robust, 47, 50 pages long. The mailer that we designed, Neil, we shrunk that way down, right? Because we want to make it cost effective. If I'm sending out 200, 300 of these things to specifically the folks I want, we shrank that down and kind of uh, condensed all of that information down to the mailing campaign where you're looking at, on average, you're looking at probably three to 350 per mailer that goes out. You don't do anything. You click a button and we take care of everything. The mailers, the stamps, all of that kind of stuff. But um, again, I'm not trying to make this pitchy whatsoever. I think the idea that you just said, Neil, this, this, you're going to get a conversation one way or another. Right. Typically, the conversations that I have with most realtors is, well, they go up and they make a pitch and they say, you know, I'm a realtor. Can I help you sell your property? Well, for 90 percent of folks like, no, I'm not interested. Go somewhere else. I'm not interested in selling. That opportunity is completely missed. Whereas now the transition that's happened in the energy space, I wouldn't call it transition. The addition that's happened in the energy space is that now the energy world is in real estate. So even if, let's say I'm the landowner, Neil, and you printed off this nice report for me, you customized it, customized everything, and I look and say, yeah, that's a great land value, but I'm not selling, Neil. Well, you're not done with me, right? Your value proposition to me as the landowner is essentially saying, well, Craig, don't worry about it. I don't want you to sell the property. Matter of fact, I found out some information that you need to be aware of. Your land's too valuable to sell. And me as the landowner, I'm going to step back and say, wait a minute, Neil, your job is to sell property. I 
I'm interested in what you have to say. You're giving me information no one's ever, everyone's ever just tried to get stuff from me because I'm the landowner, trying to get me to sell this or trying to get me to do this or trying to get me to do that. You're giving me information saying, hey, Craig, you may be able to make some, some money on this property. I'm here to say, well, Neil, how, how do I do that? Well, you're going to do it for me, right? You're the land professional. You're going to look at it and say, well, it's high value for solar. It's high value for carbon, whatever it is. It's no different than you representing me to sell my property. I'm going to sign a listing agreement with you. said, okay, great, Neil. You think you can make me some money? Let's go do it, right? You can go ahead and put that information out there, create a listing, and it goes in front of all of those folks. Yeah, you know, I so just recently this weekend, I was actually at a trade show and uh, you go back to the comment where you made and I'm, agents hear this all the time. Um, I don't want to sell my property. Stop sending me cards. I'm hearing that yeah. more and more and more. As a matter of fact, lately, I've been hearing that from more people that are actually saying, I got your card and I want to, you to sell my property. So it started making me think I need to approach this a different way. Now, I never lose sight that I'm actually here to sell something. Um, that's mm -hmm. how my company stays in business. But I right. want to see, I want to be seen as a professional. I want to see, I want to be their guy. You know, everybody says, I got a guy that I buy uh, my cars from. You walk in the dealership, yep. he knows who you are. I've had relationships with him. I buy my trucks from him year after year. I got a dentist. I got a lawyer. I got a doctor. Well, I want to be your guy in the land business. I want to be your, your, a, a trusted confidant. I want to be a fiduciary, as a matter of fact. I want to yep. be there. I want to serve you, not just to sell your property. Hopefully I'll sell your property someday. But even if I never do, all the agents out there, um, the way I'm looking at this is, okay, you never sell your property. I'm never selling. I'm going to pass on to my kid. Okay, well, what if I could create carbon credits for you? What is that? I explained to him. What if I could do solar? Yeah, there's some solar guys in my area that have been coming to me. And, you know, it could be EV charging station. It could be battery storage. Right. Let me just sit down with you. I'm not going to sell you anything. Okay, that's fine. Let me represent you in ways that you have not even begun to understand that these are out there. You may not have even heard that it was available, let alone have a guy like me come to you and bring this data. And for the agents out there, when you look at this, this data, this soft, I'm not going to use the software, this tool, it's extremely robust. It's extremely robust. And I'm telling you, what I've done is keep it simple, the KISS principle. I've just gone in and I've used Power Realty. I simply create a report. I might not even bring 52 pages like it can spit out on a regular basis. I might condense it down to just land or just solar or just yep. carbon. And I'll bring that and it creates an opportunity. There you go, we're showing you. All you gotta do is yep. unclick or click those boxes and you'll get everything you ever wanted to know about a property, which may be too much or just a little bit and then leave a little bit to come back so that when they, when a, when a potential client kind of grabs the carrot, so to say, and you go out there and you meet them and they go, well, let's just talk about solar because the solar capability in your area, but I don't want solar on my property. I, I don't want that. Okay, fine. Can I come back? Give me a time. I'm going to create another report and let's talk about this time about carbon credits. And so it gives me a, an opportunity to come back for a second time. By that time, I'm starting to establish a credibility where I'm not here to sell something for or take your property and sell it. I'm providing you a service. And that's how I've really kind of broken down some barriers with, with some potential uh, clients in my area. Yes. And that's a great point where you have to think of the, the mentality, put myself in the scenario again, the landowner. Um, let's say I was that Wisconsin landowner and I've been receiving, I, I don't know anything about solar. I, you know, I farm and I ranch for a living. That's what most of these folks do. Or, you know, I'm, I, I do something else and every once in a while I go hunt and shoot a, a whitetail on my, on my property, right? These folks aren't, they're not energy professionals. They're not carbon professionals. They're not scientists. But if I own this piece of property and I'm starting to now get letters in the mail, again, Neil, it's to your point, people are trying to get something from me. I don't have a fiduciary. Everybody who's reaching out to me is trying to get something from me. Hey, Craig, I see you've got a really good site for solar, or you've got a really good site for uh, carbon credits, whatever it is. Well, I don't really know that much about it. And unless they use Landgate to get information about their property, they're kind of guessing, right? So 
the market is set up right now where the opportunity for land professionals, I don't call, I don't call what you do, Neil, as a, a, a realtor, because me as the landowner, the only thing you can do for me is help sell my property. I'm not interested in selling my property. I need a land professional. I need someone to help me through. I'm kind of interested, right? The farm's not making as much money as it used to. Um, but now, you know, Neil, you sent me this report. I'm kind of interested. I've gotten a couple letters in the mail. There's a substation right by my property. Okay. I didn't really even think that was relative until you sent me that mailer. Now you're telling me that there's potential I can make money on, on property. It's like, okay, well, I see all this red stuff. What does that mean? Well, that you explained to me, well, you can't build there because the slopes are too high. But all of this stuff is fair game. Put a solar farm on the property. You're giving me information and you're not even asking anything from, from me. You're doing your job as my fiduciary saying, hey, here's a bunch of information. And what I've seen, and you're exactly right, you know, this isn't going to, you're going to keep buying and selling property. That's what keeps the lights on. But this is an addition to what you do every day. And a couple examples from uh, a user who really, really loves what we're doing um, and is user of Landgate down in Texas. Um, he got a listing. Now, this listing was not to sell the property, but this listing was these people wanted to try to get solar on their property. They were in the middle of nowhere, nowhere close to transmission lines. Their property was sloped. There was virtually zero chance of them ever making money on solar. But the landowner didn't know that. So this land professional generated a really quick report, sent it over to the landowners and said, hey, I'm more than happy to help you. I mean, we can create a listing, but it's really low chances that you're going to make any money off of this aspect. And they said, well, you know, we didn't think we were. We were just trying when well, you list the property and sell it for us. And that's what's, I think, special, Neil. It's relationships, right? And if I'm the landowner and you've provided me this value, you've educated me on my piece of property, probably the most valuable asset I have in my portfolio, in my life, is my land. And you're telling me about it. And I've never heard someone put it this way, Neil, but you're my land guy. You're my land guy. Regardless if I sell or buy another piece today, you're my land guy. Right. And I think that's what's really cool about this is it's building those networks and those relationships to get more clients, essentially. I mean, that's it in a nutshell, right, Neil? Yeah. You know, the in the response that I've had, Craig, from from folks that um I've sat down with is it just happened two nights ago. I actually sat with a guy. He said two things. Um, I've been interviewing agents and nobody has brought me this information. Nobody brought me ha anything that you have. And nothing against residential agents if they're on here, but they live and die by the MLS. And there's 99 million of them in, you know, in the, in the United States, I think over a million and a half residential agents in the United States. And they're all bringing the same data. They're cr creating these comps. And anybody that sells land knows that that farm in Alma, which I know where that is, by the way, um, looks nothing like the farm a mile away and nothing like any comp comparable farm that sold. So it's almost impossible to bring a comp yet, you know, residential agents or agents as a whole um, have been trying to kind of fit a round peg in a square hole forever. And we're trying to do the business the same way. What this tool allows you to do is immediately separate yourself from every other agent that you're competing against every uh, everyone not only are you bringing something that they've probably never seen the the seller you're separating yourself away from i'm i'm trying to get you to buy something in the sense of let me sell your property and they don't want to sell a lot of them are older they don't want to sell they want to pass it on to their family but taxes are getting too high they can't afford it they don't see they the, all they see is i've got to sell my property and you're the guy that's going to separate it separate me from my literally my ancestors who are buried in this soil and i don't really want to do this but i have to do it i uh, and they get almost angry with you as an agent. And I sit back and I say, okay, fine. Let's not talk about how to sell your property. Let's talk about how to keep your property. And when you do that, I guarantee you, because I've seen it, their eyes light up like, what do you mean? And I got another half hour with them. And I leave them with this report. And I, I, I leave with giving them more than I've taken. And I get a call back. So far, honestly, it's been 100%. Every single client that I did this for, I'm still talking with them. And so 
you know, I, I know people here are wondering, okay, well, how do I make some money with this, with this tool? Um, I'm really new in it, guys. And that's why I think they brought me on because I'm finding new ways to do this. And that's what I want to convey to you guys. Um, I think if I never list a property on the website, I will have one only because I've separated myself in the eyes of my competition and my brand is spread because I know this for a fact, the guy that I presented a solar report to told me his neighbor is already in bed with a solar company that is now doesn't have the funding, but he's got a five-year contract to do solar with them and they don't have the money to do the job. And I said, you know, I don't know if I can help them, but why don't you pass my information to them, show them this report, and maybe I can help them. And maybe I can fold them into my family with the Landgate support. And now they've got somebody in their corner. Somebody is representing them versus them going against this multi-gabillion dollar solar company. And they have zero basis of knowledge. Even though, guys, as the agents that are listening to this, even though you at this point don't have a basis of knowledge, you don't need it, okay? You're not gonna go in there and try to explain every detail about this tool, because I know I don't. This is a conversation starter. It's a relationship builder. And when I have questions, I simply email Craig or I or text Brooke, and they're back to me like that. And I'm learning as I go. And um, I didn't mention this at the beginning, but I, I have a podcast and I have a YouTube channel and I'm starting to incorporate Landgate into that. And people are now calling me from all over the country saying, hey, I saw that logo and I went to the software. What is that about? Or the, Blake is on here, uh, one of our Whitetail property guys in, in, in Louisiana. Blake called me and said, hey, I hear you talking about this. How's it working? And I said, well, I haven't made any money on it yet, but it's creating great relationships. And Blake, I wish he could be on this, but Blake is closing in on a, on a seven-figure payout on his first deal. And that almost, to me, sounds like, yeah, right, that's just some guy in a webinar saying this. Well, I know Blake. And if you want to call Blake at Whitetail Properties, he'll tell you this story. So this is a real opportunity. I don't want to oversell it, but I want to get folks excited to take a look at it because it's a, it's a real tool that you should be considering for your business, for sure. Well, I pr really appreciate that, Neil. I really do. I think the, you know, the idea that land just, you know, we buy and sell land. That's land professionals do a heck of a lot more than that now. Because like you said, if I'm the landowner, you're adding a value to me, you're educating me. And not only that, but now me as being out there against the 800 pound gorilla on my own, well, now I've got you next to me. And I not only have you next to me, but I have some other professionals that this is what they do for a living. Heck yeah, put it out there. Now I'm ready to go. Absolutely. I'm interested. Before I was a little bit intimidated. Here's this letter from an enormous company. Here's this letter from an enormous company. God, they're, ta they're sending me a guy that I can tell he's a professional negotiator. That's what they do all day long. But now, I've, now I'm comfortable, Neil. Now you're, you're working with me. You're working for me. And you are in the same boat that I am. You want me to get the best deal. You want me to get a good deal. And now you're bringing all of that information. So uh, it really is, I think, you know, we love our tool. We don't think there's anybody else out there that comes close. And I don't care who you're talking about. I don't care if you're talking about the 800 pound gorillas of commercial real estate data aggregation or anyone else. Nobody has what we have. But again, I don't want to be pitchy. It doesn't matter who you use. It's changing the mentality of the land professional from there's additional ways to make revenue. And I know that's the biggest thing is, you know, well, how do I make money off of it? And that's a question that I get in almost every course that I teach. We teach courses through RLI, things like that. Um, but the first thing that they, and we maybe we should start out with this, Neil, is like, how do they get paid? A lot of these folks, so if I'm a landowner and Neil comes to me with in information, now I say, okay, I'm interested, Neil. Let's go ahead and list this property. I sign a listing agreement with Neil. It's no different than any type of commercial uh, real estate agreement. I sign a listing agreement with Neil. If I ever make money off of solar or battery storage or EV charging or carbon credits or oil and gas minerals, whatever it is, Neil gets paid his commission. Right, that's an agreement between Neil and me. Right, that's I'm signing Neil's uh, listing agreement. 
LandGate's a free open marketplace. So we don't take cuts. We don't take percentages. That's Neil's, that's Neil's listing. That's so let his. me let me make a comment to there and then go I'm ahead, gonna go Neil. back to a comment that a question I just popped up by Sonia asking about solar and the information. So four years ago, I had a comment on a blog that I wrote where somebody mentioned getting in and developing passive income, secondary, secondary income to the actual real estate sales. And um as you guys know, we're entering kind of different markets right now where it's, it was a seller's market, it's transitioning to a buyer's market. And there's ways to make money in this market. And I'm going to say that this might be one that you need to seriously look at because this is passive income that if you get 10 or 15 deals uh, a year, let's say, where you just put these up on the on the marketplace and somebody picks it up for solar, that could be a home run. I mean, one Blake's deal could literally be a life-changing deal that he could almost retire on. Um, but if you never do a deal like that and you pick up $6,800 a year carbon credit deal with a guy, and, and I'm personally asking for 10% commission, Blake, I, I when Blake brought this up to me, he said, what commission are you asking? I said, well, I'm going for 10. He goes, well, I'm doing one to three. And, and I'm like, why one to three? He says, why 10? I got I just said 10 and I gauged their response and I figured $680 from 6,800 in a year. They're like, well, that's not, that's fine. But what if I do 10 of those in a year? What if I do a hundred of those in a year? What if I do a thousand of those over the next couple of years? And they're all 680 bucks. I mean, do the math. It starts to exponentially go. So I want to go back to Sonia's question. Cause I, I think it was Sonia. So if I'm wrong, Sonia, somebody posed this. Um, what does it say for solar? So here's an example of what I did. So I, I just did a report on a guy that in my territory in St. Croix County, the solar companies are coming in and there seems to be two companies that are doing most of the work and they're sending out letters to these guys and they are saying, uh, hey, we're, we're interested in your property for solar, give us a call. And so the, the, the folks call them up and they quickly sign them up on a deal because they throw out some big numbers. So I went into this guy who said, yeah, I've been getting those from two companies. One signed my neighbor up. And I said, okay, well, what did they tell you that your solar was worth? And I think, I, I, don't quote me on this exactly, Craig, but it was like $250 per gigawatt or whatever the number was. It was, yeah. it was low. And I said, well, do you know that your neighbor guy that is this farm over here told me he's getting $750 and another guy on the side of him got offered 1000 and so, um, so what are the companies that are doing land work in, in St. Croix? Um, Ryan, let me see if I can answer that. I, I'm not sure I can, but let me come back to that. And so what I said to him, I said, well, let me produce this report for you. Let's just see what it says about your farm. And it was actually lower than the numbers that I had heard. But I said, this is why they're interested in your farm. You know, you've got a power line that's coming within two miles of your property. In this case, it came right down the edge of his property. It wasn't two miles away. It was on the edge. He goes, oh, yeah, I've known about that. I didn't know I could tap into that. I said, well, they see value in that somehow. And then there was a there was a uh, transformer station, again, like 0.41 miles away that was on somebody else's farm. So I said, from learning the land gate and by having the support, I said, those are two key indicators that you've got some real value here. Now, what will they pay for it? I don't know. Let's put it up on the marketplace and let them bid against this yep. other guy. Because your neighbor got into a deal with somebody that went out of business or ran out of funding. And it was probably a middleman and not even the solar company that was making the offer. Let's cut that middle guy out of there. That's kind of a middle broker. And let's make it me and you as a team and make them as the other team and no middle guy. And let's go. Be, let's get somebody in your court. Now to answer the guy's name that who are the two guys I don't I don't know. This is so new to me. I'm still trying to unravel the business myself and as an agent, I'm trying to get myself into position to be the guy that is going to be doing this and I Blake in Louisiana uh, so on solar, you teamed up with a company that can provide it. No, I didn't team up with a company that can provide it. And I'll let Craig handle that. No, I did not. I teamed up with the landowner to put myself in their corner. So at least they have somebody that is professional, has some relationships and skills and knowledge, or at least has a tool that I can use to just like slow the process down a little bit. And let's, they're interested. We know they are. Now let's control the process. So that's that's what I've been doing. Um, it's and and again, I'm very 
early in this. The whole industry is very early in this. We're early That's adopters. Correct. That's absolutely correct. Yeah, and to that last point, uh, it depends, and I, this is this is critical. So anybody who's a land professional who represents landowners or buyers whatsoever, and I said this, uh, if anybody was at the RLI convention where we did our panel discussion, there's 500 people in the room. I said this very, very directly at the end of that panel discussion, know who your fiduciary is. If you are representing landowners, you represent landowners and you do everything you can to get as many offers for them as possible. There's nothing wrong with working for the buyer. Now, there are some folks out there that will sign a contract with an energy company and go out and procure sites to them and they'll get paid on that on, on that as a, on a percentage. Now, understand who you're working for. You're not working for the landowner at that point. You're working, you're getting paid by the energy company. You're essentially a landman. There's nothing wrong with that. But you make it very, very clear who you're being paid by. I've talked to a couple of realtors that um, I think there's going to be, there will be some folks that get themselves in trouble because they are being paid to procure sites by this energy company. But then they're also presenting themselves as if they're representing the landowner. Huge, huge no-no. You will go to jail for that. The energy company will get sued and the landowner, uh, their attorney is going to make a ton of money. Do not do that. It's very clear. Neil is very clear with how he's, he represents the landowner. And to his point earlier, if I'm the landowner, I'm Craig Kaiser, I own that 800 acre track there in Wisconsin. I sign a listing agreement with Neil. Neil works for me essentially, right? And I work, Landgate works for Neil. So everyone's working for me, the landowner. Neil's going to put that out on the marketplace and every single large developer in this country uses Landgate's platform to procure sites. So every time a good listing goes up, Neil gets that listing up, it's his listing. Everybody's going to see it in the solar world. Everybody's going to see it battery storage, regardless of what resource it is, they're going to see that and they're going to reach out to Neil. They're going to reach out to Neil. Neil's going to get those offers. and. Even if he's not super sure of what everything is in that lease agreement, he doesn't need to. Because the first thing Neil's going to do is pick up the phone and call Landgate and get, I, I have a question about this. What does this mean? What does this mean? What does this mean? So that he can answer the questions that me as the landowner have. So Neil's educated. Neil's ready to go ahead and bring these offers. He sits down with me and my family. We look at it and say, okay, yep, this makes sense. We're going to go with company C. They might not even be the highest offer, but company C, has built multiple power stations in that state. They have certain RFPs that they're trying to fill in that area. They're just not a random company that's trying to let, grab up land. So that's important to know that you guys need to understand that this is a land play. It's, an, it's the biggest land play that's ever happened in the country. This dwarfs the shale boom for oil and gas back in the early you know, 2010 to 2014. This is going to dwarf that, right? It involves you and your clients. But uh, I think there's a question here from Jason. Uh, thanks for clarification. Passing is always great when it's done correctly and ethically correct. We either list the property to get sold, or in this case, they don't want to list it and they can create other incomes. Absolutely. That is spot on, right? And that's the goal of this webinar. It's not sell subscriptions, not any of that. It's to get you guys to understand that if I'm a landowner and I do not want to sell my property, I'm still your client. There's still a service for me. There's still a service for you to apply to me, regardless of how and what tool you use. I would love for you guys to lose, use Landgate, but it really is this. The, the, the point of this is for you guys to understand there's more to what you do every day than just buying and selling real estate and doing it as quick as possible. This is a lifetime type of relationship with these large landowners. And Neil, I love that. I'm, we're going to start using that. Neil's going to be my land guy, regardless. Moving forward, here's this piece of this report. N Neil might not make a penny off of me for two or three years, but he's my land guy. And Neil knows that I'm worthwhile to put investment into because I own 800 acres and it's very high valuable acres. So in two and a half years, when me and my wife decide to retire and the kids no longer want the farm, well, guess what? Neil's going to sell my property because he's been my guy, he's been serving me. So that's really the point is this data never existed before. It was never in the real estate realm. It was never in the real estate space. 
that's what I think we've done very, that's really special is bringing all of that information in where now I'm not a flyover type of client for Neil because he knows I don't want to sell my property. I could be his best client he's ever had. And that's true. There's a couple of folks that have been using Landgate for a couple of years now. The best clients they have, the most that have the most valuable land when it comes to natural resources, those land professionals are very honest with them. And they say, your land is too valuable to sell. Absolutely, I can sell it right now, but it's too valuable to sell. I don't want you to sell it. There's so much revenue that you can make on this property over the next three to 10 years. I would not be doing my job if I told you to sell this property. So I'm doing a disservice to myself. Now, that's a completely different discussion than probably anybody who deals with real estate has ever told that individual. Now there's a point of trust there. Well, what do you mean, Neil? What do you mean it's too valuable to sell? Well, that ugly transmission, and this is a this is a real scenario that a huge landowner in Southeast Wyoming, that's probably gonna have the biggest solar farm in the entire region on them, simply because of a conversation they had with somebody using Landgate. Well, you know that ugly transmission line running through your property? And the matriarch of the family says, yeah, we've been cussing those transmission lines ever since they went in 30 years ago. And I had a conversation with that family with the agent and said, those ugly transmission lines are probably going to make you the most wealthy family in this entire county, if not the three county area. And this is all theoretical, right? This is two, two and a half years ago. Well, what do you mean? Have you ever thought about putting solar panels on that portion of the ranch? Well, yeah, we don't use it. We can't really run much cattle. The grass isn't very good there. Well, what do you think? Would you want to put a listing out there? Yeah, I guess it's a long shot. Why not put a listing out there? Just the option payments alone, and this is grassland, this is Great Plains, you know, it changes, depends on where you're at in the country, but their option payments alone on their lease paid off their entire 6,000 acre ranch, which they've been trying to pay off with, Lord knows how many night shifts and jobs, that option alone paid off their, their ranch, and they have, if everything gets built, it's probably close to 100 to $120 million project for them over the course of 35 years. These are substantial, substantial numbers. Craig, I'm seeing a couple of questions on here with people yeah, asking let's, some let's get good questions. So I'm gonna go back. So Sonia is asking a couple of great questions. Good job, Sonia. She asked about geothermal and I'm, I don't believe geothermal is part of this, yes or no? I'm glad she asked that question because right now we have our geologist, our resident geologist. Um, Coming. It's, it, it's, we have it in the database, but okay. what we do is we combine the geothermal, which if people real quick, what geothermal is, it's where you have high temperature gradients in the, in, in the subsurface, no matter where you're at, if you drill down in the subsurface, the deeper you get, the hotter it gets. Well, that varies the rate of the, the heat increase changes depending on where you're at. So geothermal energy is pumping fluid down in these really hot areas, pulling it back up, pull, and then pulling that energy out and turning it into electrons. So wherever you have a really high geothermal gradient, it's good and you don't have a lot of faults, um, like California, geothermal could work really well. So we're adding that into the database now. That's going to be another piece of data that you'll be able to supply to your clients. We also need that for carbon sequestration. So that's injecting carbon into the subsurface. That's going to be something that um, is, if you haven't, if you just are now hearing about it, you're going to be hearing a lot more about it, especially if you're in an area that's on the margins of oil and gas production, not in the heart of oil and gas production. We're not talking Reeves County, um, Eddy County, New Mexico. If you are on the outskirts of where oil and gas production has been, you're likely going to start seeing a lot of carbon injection leasing going on. So. So let's talk about a little bit of how people can use the software that don't understand what geothermal is, don't even understand if this, how to determine, how to interpret the data. The software can do things like give you land information with slope, it can give you soils. And again, what the software, uh, I keep using software, the tool does, Langate tool, is it opens up the opportunity for conversation that puts you immediately 
at the ground table with the people that are looking for sources of information. They don't know, you don't know, but you're a salesperson. But again, you're not selling. You've, you've, you've crossed over this bridge to being an information provider. And I could tell you from the few conversations I've had with guys around the country that are starting to incorporate this is they don't know the answer either. And they have no idea who to go to. And you're the most knowledgeable person that they've ever met. And you know a smidgen because you're kind of nervous about being in front of them because you don't know the answers, but you don't need to know the answers. You need to now position yourself as the go-to conduit, and then you'll go find the answers. And that's where you call Craig or somebody. I'm, you know, I don't want to oversell your capabilities, Craig, but I'm guessing you know a lot of people around the country that once you get a conversation started about something that they can do with their land, you're either going to know the answer, or you're going to know somebody that knows the answer. And again, you as a salesperson has been uh, put in a strong position. Again, Britt McCarthy asks, does Landgate show properties that would be ideal for cell towers? Cell towers. My, my thought cell is- towers, Cell towers yet. is something we, we, we no, we, we thought about it. We, we've had a few requests. Um, you can use the Landgate tool for cell towers because a lot of the criteria as far as what's buildable, things like that, topography, we already have that built in for battery storage locations, solar, things like that. So you can use the Landgate tool for cell towers. We don't do anything specifically for cell towers. Um, but the, I want to touch quickly on, there was a question above from Ryan Kopp. Um, the answer to that question, what companies are doing solar land work in St. Croix? Any land professional is doing solar land work in St. Croix. Whether they know it or not, they are doing solar work, okay? What I've seen a lot of uh, holes being stepped in with land professionals is they get contact information for one or two solar companies and they immediately pick up the phone and say, hey, I've got a deal, are you interested in it? Essentially saying, hey, I, I'm begging you, will you give me an offer? Please, please give me an offer. You guys are all professional negotiators. That's the last thing you should ever do in a negotiation is say, hey, I'm really, really interested. Send us an offer, please send us an offer. The marketplace that we've set up, marketplace that Neil's been using, Blake's been using, a lot of folks have been using very successfully, it's the opposite of that. You're going to work with any landowner in your area that has a good, a good site or even is relatively interested. The moment you have that listing and that listing agreement, it goes, you put it up on Landgate, it already goes in front of every single solar developer. So you don't need a Rolodex of two or three people, right? You don't, that's not what you want to do. That's, that's a terrible negotiation tactic is pick up the phone and say, hey, please send me an offer. You want them to be reaching out to you. If I'm sitting in uh, the office of one of these, you know, $150 billion companies, and I'm looking through Landgate's marketplace and platform, and I see Neil just posted 800 acres in that Wisconsin area that I just that we just did a demo for. Well, the incentives are extraordinarily high there. I'm already looking for sites there. I'm trying as best I can to knock doors down, get callbacks, and I'm getting about a half a percent, one percent success rate. Meanwhile, Neil just posted a listing up there, 800 acres. He did my job essentially for me. I'm going to reach out to Neil, be like, hey, you know, my name's you know, Jane Smith, whatever it is from XY Energy. We're really interested in the site. Can you tell me more about it? Anybody who's interested in leasing ground in that area, if you put a listing up, they're going to reach out to you. You don't want it to be the other way around because you're, you're cutting your legs out from underneath you in the negotiation. Everything's a negotiation, especially these things. So I think we're, you go ahead, Neil. We're, yeah, we're I was just going to say, here. what do you want to add here, Neil? Again, you know, when you start using this tool, you become the local contact. And there are 100 people on here that want that every solar company wants to know. If you're thinking about being involved in this tool and doing this, they do not have that local market connection right now. They're they there's just there's disconnected from the very people that they want to work with, and that's landowner. And us as land specialists see these people every single day. 
That's that's the value of this. You immediately jump to the front of the line when you start posting and the deals will start coming to you is what I've been told. Again, I'm, I'm still trying to get my first listing up there, but I, I'm seeing this coming that within a month, I'm already the expert, if you will, or at least the guy that's doing this. I'm like becoming the contact very, very quickly in my local area. I know that's happened to other people around the country because I've spoken with them. Correct. Absolutely. And Sonia had a question here. It's a really good question. Um, Sonia's got a lot of good questions. Keep it up. She does. Absolutely. Very, very good engagement. Um, is it a listing for sales contract or for a lease? It's for leasing, right? So I don't want to sell. I'm the landowner. Sonia, I don't want to sell my land. But Neil has a proposition for me to help make me more money. Neil's going to tell me, no, Craig, we're not going to sell your land right now. It's too valuable. You know, if nothing happens, we get it listed for solar, wind, carbon, whatever it is, and nothing happens, well, then maybe we can talk about that in six to 12 months, whatever it is. But for now, I just want to, you know, Neil's going to tell me, we just want to list the property to try to get this revenue. So we have a template um, that you guys can use. It's in our resources page. Jordan, if you can maybe pull up the resources page and maybe put it in the chat. I think we're going to, we're going to send that out as well in an email. There's going to be a follow-up email for everybody here. Um, we'll have that resources tab in there, but you can get a template listing agreement <clears throat> of what it looks like to just lease for these resources. Now you're going to need to make that your own. You know, it's just a template. Each one of you in the, you know, whatever county you're in, whatever state you're in, make it fit what you do for your brokerage, for your company, whatever it is. Um, but that is something that we really pride ourselves in. And Neil touched on that earlier. We work our tails off for customer support. You know, if you guys have a question, if you have a problem, you pick up the phone, you're talking to me, you're talking to Brooke Thomas, um, you're talking to folks on our team. We want you to be as successful as possible. Uh, I see one more question and we'll probably have to wrap it up here in a little bit. Can you dive into best practices around when you list a property and when proposals start coming in? Example, a seven year purchase option. Very good question. I would never ever allow, if I'm a land professional, I would never ever allow my client to sign a seven year purchase option. And here's why, this, I, this is a really important topic. If I am a land developer, Neil's gonna be the, the land professional, I'm an I'm a energy developer. And Neil posted that 800 acre property. I think it looks really, really good. I'm an energy developer, I know there's gonna be additional value there but I'm not guaranteed that there's going to be electrons and solar panels showing up. I'm going to de-risk my, completely de-risk my investment. And I'm going to go to Neil and I'm going to say, hey, Neil, I'm really interested. I'm going to take down the whole property. I don't want to lease it. I'm going to buy the whole thing. But I'm not going to pay you for seven years because I know it's in a really good area for solar, but it's not still a guarantee that panels are actually going to go up. But I'm going to know within seven years whether panels go up and if this 800 acre property went from being worth $3 million to being worth $50 million, I'm going to know that I don't have to pay anything for seven years. Be very, very cautious. And this is why I'm saying everyone in this meeting, you are in the energy industry right now. If you're getting a seven year option to purchase, I don't care where it's coming from, what the, what the letterhead says, that's coming from somebody who likely knows something about that property that you don't. Right, that's a phenomenal investment for them. They've de-risked everything. If not, the deal doesn't go through. I don't even got to go through with the purchase. So be very careful with an option to purchase that property. Um, the leases are also an option, but that's typical, right? You're going to have an option period, two to five years. They're going to get their permits, interconnection queues, getting all the logistical things in order, and then they're going to start the project, and you'll actually be getting paid the high dollar lease amounts once the panels show up. That's winning the lottery. If you get a client that they get panels on their property and you help them do it, that is winning the lottery. Those are enormous payouts. But another thing real quick, we'll touch on this. We'll probably have, we'll have another web. We have some webinars specifically about this point. That cash flow, once a client gets uh, wind or solar on their property, the cash flow can be sold and brought forward on a net present value basis, and that can be a 1031 exchange. So if Neil listed my property, got me in a lease, we got panels built, over the course of three to five years, Neil has like four or five deals for me. He's getting paid on my lease, he's gonna help me sell my lease, he's gonna 1031 exchange the lease for me, 
And then he's going to go buy more property for me with the 1031 exchange, all without ever selling a square foot of my original property. So that's what we that's what I really hope people start getting their their heads wrapped around. These are large dollar amounts without selling property. You just have to get started in the deal. I know it can be intimidating, but that's, you know, Neil, you got started and here you are. You're, you are the go, you, you are the guy. You are the land guy in your area and uh, you've just been doing this a short time. So um we I'll ask her one more question then we got to go um customer is in bed with a defunct company. Exactly. Yeah, so somebody got Somebody took a lease that they probably shouldn't have taken because they didn't have representation. They didn't know what they were doing. Now they're stuck in a five-year lease. So, uh, um, Craig, we do have a question um, okay. from Rob. He's asking. Okay, I see. Yeah, the, the government incentives yes. for mm -hmm. uh, preservation of wetlands and wildlife habit habitat. Right now, we have a database of um, conservation easements that we're going to be folding in to the database. So you'll be able to see all of those as well. Now that's not going to be a complete data set, but typically if you are aware of a conservation easement that's been in place, um, solar, wind, any type of energy development on the parcel, it's not likely going to be available as long as that conservation easement's in place. So that's something for you to know. That's going to rule out a lot of those, a lot of those things. If you can get out of the conservation, if it's a really, really good site for solar battery storage, whatever, and they can get out of it, it's probably worthwhile doing that. Um, but we are up on time. Neil, I want to say thank you so much, man. This is, I think, I hope it's been worthwhile, you guys. Um, Neil, again, he's taking the bull by the horns here. He's, I don't want to speak for you, Neil. Maybe put yourself in some uncomfortable position situations because you don't have nobody has all the answers, but you're starting to have these conversations. You're starting to learn, well, what kind of questions are most of these folks going to have? And here you are, you're out here running with it. Let's, you know, 100 people are out here listening to you. So. Um, well, if I'm not running around with my hair on fire scared, then I feel like I'm not doing my job, but you just got to jump into this and take it slow. That's what I did. And, you know, find a guy that you kind of feel comfortable with and say, you know, I kind of have this new tool. I'd like to run this report for you. And can I bring it to you? And I really don't know much about it yet, but uh, I think I got some things you're going to want to know about your land. And that's how I started. And I'm just producing these reports, probably one or two a week and seeing how people respond. So just give it a shot. It's all I could say. Give it a try. Absolutely. Well, thank you guys all for joining. Uh, again, Neil, thank you. Great job. Jordan, thanks for your assistance. Uh, in the background, if you guys didn't know, Jordan Ellis does an amazing job on the marketing side for her. She's been in the background helping me out with stuff. So thank you, Jordan. Thanks, everybody, for joining.